Hello everybody, this is David. Welcome back to my channel. This video is the next in our series, Martyrs for Jesus, and behind me is the statue of Bishop John Hooper, who was the Bishop of Gloucester, and he was martyred in 1555. And uh, the statue and the memorial behind me is the actual spot where he was martyred. So welcome back to the video series. We are going into the cathedral and the rest of the video will be taking place from inside the cathedral. I am quoting from the book A Gloucester Martyr, John Hooper and the English Reformation, written by Peter Sullivan. And I'm quoting from chapters 9, 10 and 12. It's true to say that politically and religiously England in the 1500s was a very difficult place. A lot of things happened. There was a, a big swing between um, Catholicism and Protestantism uh, in the, uh, the royal household, the kings and the queens of England. But I want to quote from page 77 of chapter 9 of this book. Edward's funeral at Westminster Abbey on the 8th of August 1553 not only marked the death of the sovereign but also symbolised the passing of the Protestant regime and the ushering in of the return to Catholicism. Archbishop Cramner who was still in office despite putting his name to the council's rejection of Mary's pretensions to the throne, officiated using the Protestant prayer book of 1552, and the sermon delivered by the reappointed Catholic Bishop Day of Chichester was a clear sign of things to come. Mary herself chose not to lend her presence to the occasion, but instead attended a requiem mass at the tower with Stephen Gardiner officiating. The anti-Protestant backlash was gathering pace and Hooper, of all people, understood the very real danger he was in. He was soon to inform Bullinger, Our king is taken from us by reason of our sins. We now place our confidence in God alone and earnestly entreat him to, to comfort and strengthen us to endure any sufferings, whatever, for the glory of his name. I'm going to quote from chapter 10 now, page 78. During the reign of Henry VIII, Hooper had escaped abroad to avoid persecution under the Six Articles of 1539. Now, the Six Articles deserve a video all by themselves, and I will be doing a video on those. While engaged at the home of Sir Thomas Arundel, he had borrowed a horse from a friend whom he had saved from the gallows, and then had made his way to the coast. From there he, he had sailed to France, spending a brief time in Paris and Strasbourg before returning to England. It was not long before he was compelled to flee again. On that occasion he pretended to be the captain of a, of a ship, sailing to Ireland and crossed to France once more before travelling on to Strasbourg and then Basel where he and Anna de Surclass married in late March 1547. Now under Mary he faced fleeing again. Other leading Protestants including John Ponet, John Knox and John Fox escaped abroad illegally, that is, without having a passport granted by the government. And, pass, and Protestant fishermen on the Sussex coast were willing to ri risk providing transport across the channel. This time, however, Hooper decided he must remain in England and face the consequences. Once I did flee, he said, but now, because I am called to this vocation, I am thoroughly persuaded to tarry and to live and die with my sheep. Soon after leaving Zurich in 1549, he told Bullinger almost prophetically, let others talk and extenuate and make whatever excuse they please, who, when the wolf is coming, have left their sheep to be torn in pieces by thieves and robbers, 
Unless they repent, they will wretchedly suffer the punishment of hirelings in that day when the true shepherd shall come to separate the sheep from the goats. He was certainly no hireling. God had given him a flock or two to guard, and to desert them now would be a repudiation of his calling and a dereliction of his duty. He was, however, not only a bishop, he was also a husband and a father, and so had responsibilities and duties towards his family too. For now, Anna and Rachel and a new son, Daniel, would remain in England. But the time would come when Hooper would feel compelled to send them to comparative safety abroad. By April, Anna Hooper and her daughter Rachel had arrived in Frankfurt via Antwerp and had made arrangements for little Daniel to join them later. It was a very painful time for Anna, separated from the husband she loved, knowing that she would never see him again and facing the prospect of bringing up their children without him. As much as she could, she comforted herself by prayer and reading the word of God, but she was already grieving. In a letter to Bullinger dated the 20th of April 1554, she spoke of carrying this burden of widowhood as she waited to hear the inevitable news, not knowing if it would arrive that day, the following week, or month, or in a year's time. She felt herself numb and in a state of limbo. Correspondence from Bullinger was a huge source of encouragement to her. She explained to her dear friend in Zurich that she habitually read his letters over and over again to add spurs to this dull flesh. At the beginning of May, Hooper heard rumours that a number of the Protestant prisoners, including himself, were to be called to a public disputation at Cambridge, similar to the one that Cramner, Ridley and Hugh Latimer had taken part in at Oxford during the previous month. On the 6th of May, he managed to get a letter to Robert Ferrer, Dr. Roland Taylor, John Bradford and John Philpot, who were all held in the King's Bench in Southwark, to alert them to the plans that were afoot and to assure that they were well prepared for such an event. He urgently sought their advice as how to respond and offered his own thoughts. It was a matter to be approached with great caution and wisdom. He felt particularly as the Oxford disputation had turned out to be something of a stitch up. This is what he said, you know, such as all, such as shall be censors and judges over us, breathe and thirst our blood. And whether we, by God's help, overcame after the word of God or by force and subtlety of our adversaries be overcome, this will be the conclusion. Our adversaries will say they overcome, as you perceive how they report of those great learned men and godly personages at Oxford. Before agreeing to participate, Hooper believed they should stipulate a number of conditions. First, they ha should have full access to and use of their theological books to ensure that they themselves were well briefed and that their adversaries could not get away with making false assertions or taking quotations out of context. Second, they should ensure that honest sworn notaries were present to make a faithful record of proceedings. Thirdly, if the disputation descended into abuse and disorder, they should immediately, immediately appeal to be heard before the Queen, Council or Parliament. Of course, none of this worked and John Hooper was burnt at the stake, martyred on the 4th of February, 1555. I just want to end with um, reading one of his prayers. He was actually allowed to pray for an hour and a half, but this is one of his prayers. O Lord Jesus, that for those whose love I leave willingly this life 
and desire the bitter death of the cross with the loss of all my worldly things than either to abide the blasphemy of thy most holy name or to obey unto men in, in breaking of thy commandments. Thou seest, Lord, that where I might live in wealth to worship a false god and to honour thine enemy, I choose rather the torments of my body and the loss of this my life, and have counted all things but vile dust and dung, that I might win thee, whose death is more dear to me than thousands of gold and silver. Such love, Lord, hast thou laid up in my breast, that I hunger for thee, as the deer that is wounded desireth the soil. Accept this burnt sacrifice, O heavenly Father, not for the sacrifice's sake, but for thy dear Son's sake, my Saviour, for whose testimony I offer this my free will offering with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my soul. So this is the end of the video from Gloucester Cathedral. We've been learning about the martyrdom of John Hooper, the Bishop of Gloucester who was martyred in 1555. And I'm sure we've all been moved by his story. So I want to thank you for joining me in this video. See you next time. Bye bye.